Now, with the announcement today that the Book of Boba Fett will begin streaming on December 29th of this year, which means, other than that first episode, the bulk of what's rumored to be a six-episode season will actually air next year, that then means 2022 is shaping up to be the absolute biggest year for Star Wars ever, at least in terms of sheer content. In fact, if we count Book of Boba Fett towards next year, which, again, most of it will take place in, that means there could very well be four live-action Star Wars shows next year, and at the very least we'll be getting three of them, and I'll discuss all of them in a bit, as well as make some educated guesses as to when exactly to expect them throughout the next year, as well as what to expect from them. Not to mention here, there will be at least one animated show next year as well, that being Season 2 of The Bad Batch in the summer, with the potential for Star Wars droids to be next year as well, which is a show we know little about other than it will be animated and likely geared more towards a younger crowd. And all of this is to say nothing of anything that maybe hasn't been announced quite yet, that may be coming next year, though I wouldn't expect too many, if any, real surprises considering just how much we're getting next year. And with this much content coming, apparently long gone are the days of, even though it was only a few short years ago, of Bob Iger, then CEO of Disney, basically saying Star Wars fatigue was plaguing the franchise, that people were getting too much content too quickly, and not watching it for that reason, that there was just too much of it, even though they were only really putting out one movie a year, on average, all the while Marvel was putting out two or even sometimes three with the MCU and doing just fine, which maybe means it wasn't quantity that people weren't pleased about when it comes to Star Wars, but rather the quality. However, after two very successful seasons of The Mandalorian, a fantastic season 7 of The Clone Wars, and a season of The Bad Batch that did well enough to warrant a second season, and mind you, I really enjoyed it, it seems maybe, hopefully, they're getting the quality issue under control of it, and are apparently ready to go all in, and I mean really all in, on Star Wars. In fact, we're getting close, or basically on the eve of, what I'd call critical mass for Star Wars, or the point where there's almost always going to be something Star Wars currently running or about to start up again after something concludes, that point where there will never be much more than a month or two in a row where nothing Star Wars is airing on Disney+, Plus or potentially coming to a theater near you. And as discussed before, this has no doubt been the goal all along for Disney when it comes to Star Wars on Disney+, Plus to have a steady stream and only small breaks in between, to dissuade fans from ever canceling their subscriptions, then when you factor in the tremendous amount of overlap between Star Wars and Marvel fans, and that Marvel is basically aiming for and pretty much achieved the same kind of thing, of always having something running, I mean, and, well, Disney has you subscribed for life. And look, I'm not trying to sound like I'm complaining here by any stretch. I know some people hate Disney for any number of reasons, and they are free to do that or to feel that way, I get it. I'm certainly not the biggest fan of everything Disney does either, but it doesn't change the fact that I love and root for Star Wars and oftentimes appreciate the people who make it, if not those who own it. It's similar to how I might not like the ownership of my favorite sports team, but I cheer for the team anyway independent of that, and that there are players on the team that I can be a fan of as well and cheer for. There's also the fact that both can bring fans together for good to give them something positive and fun to share, as long as they don't take things too far. But anyway, before I get too far off topic, what I'm saying is that $8 a month for Disney+, Plus and then for nearly constant Star Wars and or Marvel content sounds like a dream come true, to be honest, assuming said content is good, which is the key and hopefully something they've come to realize like I was just talking about. Not taking Star Wars fans for granted and assuming they'll happily consume anything with the logo on it is the key here. And so next year, 2022, not only has the potential to be one of the biggest years of Star Wars in terms of content, but also in terms of quality if done right. And it'll of course start with Book of Boba Fett on December 29th of this year, which has sort of been labeled The Mandalorian Season 2.5. And we'll pick up after that post credit scene at the end of the final episode of Season 2 of The Mandalorian, when Boba Fett, with the help of Fennec Shand, claimed Jabba the Hutt's old throne from Bib Fortuna, or Jabba's old Major Domo, and is now running the show. And honestly, and keeping this brief, if the show is anything like The Mandalorian and like what we saw from Boba Fett in The Mandalorian, and do keep in mind Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau are executive producers on this, then I don't know why we shouldn't expect this to be pretty amazing. This could be, and should be, what Boba Fett fans have been waiting a very, very long time for. 
This series then, The Book of Boba Fett, and I'm assuming six episodes, will wrap up on February 2nd, and starting to play the guessing game now, I'd imagine next up, and starting maybe late March or early April, will be Andor, the series everyone seems to forget about or not be too excited about, for any number of reasons, not the least of which is we know how Andor's story has to end. Plus, especially after Rebels, I'm not sure another pre-A New Hope series is what everyone's been waiting for. Nevertheless, even apparently without K2SO in the first season, which is a bit of a letdown because he was the favorite character of many fans from Rogue One, there is promised to be plenty of familiar faces in this series, or so has been recently said by Diego Luna, who of course plays Cassian, and two that we know are returning for sure are Saw Gerrera and Mon Mothma, and someone like Bail Organa also seems highly likely too. Then there are some interesting possibilities, including maybe a young Leia somehow, or maybe even Ahsoka Tano, considering Cassian is a Fulcrum agent and she was actually the first Fulcrum agent. Live-action versions of members of the Ghost crew also don't seem impossible, considering this is set during the exact same time. Nor would something like a glimpse of Vader or maybe even the Inquisitors, though something like that seems far less likely, but who knows. As for what this is actually going to be about, well, not a whole lot of details just yet, other than this will essentially be a spy thriller of some kind. Alright, and figuring this will be a six episode season, or maybe eight at the most, it'll probably then run us into early to mid-May, which then means next up will almost certainly be the second season of The Bad Batch, and it'll start sometime probably mid-June. As for what to expect from it after a solid first season, well, probably another dozen or so episodes, and hopefully more of a focus on story arcs and less on one-off episodes. Either way, I'd imagine more Omega, more Crosshair, more of the Bad Batch, and hopefully some fun surprises of other clones or other characters. And all in all, I think this thing will run then into late August or early September. And so next up then, for its confirmed six-episode run, would be the Kenobi series. And it'll probably start up in early October and then run into mid-November. And of all the upcoming shows, this one is the one I am the most anxious about. This is the one I do not want to see them screw up, but easily could be if they get maybe too ambitious with it. And right now we do know that Hayden Christensen is coming back to play Darth Vader and that Kathleen Kennedy promised us the rematch of the century between them, which is what I'm talking about when I say I hope they don't get too ambitious. I do think and fear they could easily make this bigger and far more epic than maybe it needs to be. Then again, maybe some fans would love to see a literal duel between these two favorite characters again. As for myself, I'm not opposed to it necessarily, They'll just have to be a heck of a setup to get us there. Closing out the year then, and maybe starting sometime in late December, and then spilling into the next year, if not just being outright in the next year altogether, will be Season 3 of The Mandalorian. And honestly, next year for this sounds much more likely, likely maybe in January or even February, unless these other dates get crunched down a bit, which certainly isn't impossible when you consider 2023, and every year to follow most likely, We'll also have plenty of content coming too, including another movie finally with Rogue Squadron in December of 2023. As for what to expect from Mandalorian Season 3, well I think this is going to be a rather different season when compared to the first two, especially as we start to build toward the crossover event series we learned about from Kennedy that would connect Mandalorian, Book of Boba Fett, Ahsoka, and Rangers of the New Republic if that's still a thing. I don't know that we'll be seeing Grogu much at all, if at all, in this season, but rather I think it'll focus more on the Mandalorians, the bigger picture, and what's going on with the Darksaber. Also, I wouldn't be surprised to see more Imperial stuff with Thrawn brought into the mix as well. And despite how that second season ended with the arrival of Luke Skywalker, I really wouldn't expect to see him in here either. Instead, as I've predicted elsewhere, I'm going to assume we'll be getting a Luke and Grogu series at some point, be it in live action or maybe even animation, and it'll focus on the formation of Luke's Jedi Order. I mean, considering the reaction to that finale, it seems like a given that those two will be put together in a show at some point. Anyway, that's my quick overview as to how I see the next year of Star Wars shaping up, at least when it comes to Disney+. Plus. There will obviously be other things like new games, books, comics, and so on that will all fit in there somewhere as well. And this should be, again, the biggest year of Star Wars ever. 
and here's to hoping it's one of the best. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think about all this. Are you excited for a jam-packed year of Star Wars, or are you in the less is more camp? Is this maybe too much, and would you rather see fewer shows? Or maybe you're someone who would literally like a new Star Wars every week, and would like there to be even more shows. Whatever the case may be, leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.